Hi guys, welcome back to the Recovery Channel. If you're new to the channel, this is a series of videos detailing my recovery from a major stroke, sharing stroke stories, uh, meeting people, interviewing people and finding out what's working for other people out there. Most of the time my videos are quite serious talking about subjects on recovery, but today I want to have a little bit of fun and talk about my favourite part of stroke recovery. It was inspired by an email I got by a lady asking why I'm so passionate and what's my favourite part of the neuro recovery process. I absolutely love getting emails like this at strokerecoveryvideo at gmail.com. A lot of people ask me quite personal questions, they don't want to talk about it on YouTube um, comments, so that's fine, just email me if you have any questions. Happy to talk about anything stroke related. The reason I'm so passionate is obviously because I've survived a major stroke and had to relearn everything. And I've had a really, really good recovery. Um, that'll be in a separate video. But um, as soon as I had the stroke, I was living in rehab and immediately I was helping other people, just talking to them, finding out what's working for them, what's not working, and speaking to the best people in the field about recovery. So I guess I'm passionate because my outlook was pretty grim. When I was asked to set goals, my first goal was to return to work. And the doctor said, looked in my eyes and said, Alex, I don't think you'll ever walk again. So having heard that and then recovered as well as I have, that's probably why, where my passion comes from. Also, I absolutely love visiting people in hospitals and rehab. Um, I've done that a lot, but with Melbourne being in lockdown again, I can't visit people in rehabs to help them. So I'm doing it over FaceTime and just message, chat, email, making sure they're staying on the right track. But Visiting people in rehab is my absolute favourite thing to do. If you have had a stroke in my area, the medial prefrontal area, which is right here, um, you will have personality changes and you, it's quite common to get obsessive about things after a stroke. Um, people start to collect things. I know grown men that collect uh, toys and get really obsessive about, obsessive about collecting things. So. I've kind of channeled my obsession into helping other people, which is a really good source of happiness for me. I've also just bought a ring light, so hopefully you can see me a bit better. A uh, person emailed me and said the video is really, really good and really helping, but the lighting's terrible. As you can see, this house is really, really old in Melbourne, so the lighting's terrible in this house, but hopefully this ring light will improve things. Because I've uh, visited and helped so many people through rehab, I really have learned not the shortcuts, but the hacks, the, um, the most efficient and fastest way to recover. And I absolutely love sharing what I've learned to help as many people as I can. But on to the second question in the email, my favourite part of neuro recovery. Um, easily my favourite part is getting people's affected arm movement. As you can see, I've got full range of movement. Probably about 90% strength. I'm learning guitar again, which is really hard because I've got spasticity in my fingers. So after I've been playing guitar for a little while, my hand tends to do this and I have to really stretch it out. But upper limb recovery is my favourite because you really give people's lives back. Um, learning to walk is amazing, obviously, but learning to use your arm again, you really give them their life back. It's really important for living independently. Learning to use your arm again is, in my opinion, the second hardest thing you recover from. Um, second to mental filter recovery. If you have had a medial prefrontal stroke like me, um, mental filter is easily the hardest thing to recover from because it's there all the time. I have done two videos on mental recovery and there's probably more to say, so I could do more videos as I meet more people, but upper limb's definitely my favorite thing to work on because yeah, you really give people their life back. I also have very clear memories about um, since waking up from the coma and looking down and not being able to use my arm or my leg. That was really, really disheartening because you can't see a light at the end of the tunnel. You think if it's not working now, it will never work. I remember asking the doctors to cut my arm off. I said, I can't look at it anymore. It was in a sling, I couldn't move it. Um, so I said, can you cut it off because it's making me depressed. They said, no, no, you'll learn to use it again. Um, it's just gonna take years. And as I said, really disheartening. So that's probably why upper limb's my favorite thing to recover from. Wasn't until 12 months after the stroke that I could start to use my arm. Once I got some shoulder strength back in, I started opening doors with my left hand. 
I'll still do it today just out of habit. I don't even realise I'm using my left hand, but I, I use it for most things that I do now. I remember being in upper limb group in rehab, which is basically a group focused on getting people's upper limbs working again. It's uh, really, really difficult. And I remember sitting there just wishing my arm would move. Um, I couldn't even imagine how it would ever work again. They'd put my arm on the table and say, just try and move it backwards and forwards. If you've ever been to an upper limb group in a rehab, you will get a glimpse at what it is to be strong. You'll see the immense concentration on people's faces trying to think about moving their arm. I've said this before, but you almost think about it to the point where you almost give yourself a nosebleed. So five years post major stroke, I still have some trouble with my arm. Obviously I can't play guitar as well as I could. Um, I have full range of movement. I'm at the gym every single day. Well, at least when it's not locked down. Melbourne's in its seventh lockdown now, which is really annoying because the gym's closed. But some things that I struggle with is obviously lifting things up, lifting the kids up. I've got two kids. Um, helping them swimming in the pool is quite difficult. I still unstack the dishwasher with my left hand just to get full movement back and just maintain what I've got. Maybe even improve what I've got. My favourite way of getting your upper limb moving again is um, constraint induced therapy. I'm sure I've spoken about this before, but basically tie your good arm behind your back or put an oven mitt on so you can't use it at all. And as soon as you can, use your affected arm for absolutely everything. Start with opening doors, uh, move into folding towels, um, doing whatever you can. As soon as you can put your thumb and your finger together, it's amazing what you can do with your affected arm. So constraint induced therapy is really the hack or the, the quickest way of recovering your arm. You really need to focus on your shoulder. If you don't have a strong shoulder, you don't have a strong arm. Uh, no matter how good your hand or arm is, if you don't have a strong shoulder, you don't have anything at all. So I use a lot of e-stim. The e-stim is on my shoulder probably about seven or eight hours a day. Even while I had to sleep at rehab or had a nap, the e-stim was still working my shoulder. So I was using it at all times and then as soon as I could use it, opening doors is really good for shoulder strength, um, nice and slowly. Don't hitch, don't don't pick something up and do that because that's not using your shoulder properly. You'll form some really, really bad habits and it's hard to get out of them. So start by opening doors with your affected arm and as soon as you can get that thumb and finger together, use it for absolutely everything you can. Scrunching newspaper up is really, really helpful. I did that a lot. Um, you can get a Digiflex, which is a little hand gripping machine where you basically just squeeze it and it's got springs in it so it'll let your hand back out. Um, that's really helpful. So there you go guys, that's my favourite part of neuro rehab. It's getting people's arms moving again. As I said, if I get their arms moving again, they basically get their life back or they can live independently. If you have liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Share the video with anybody you think needs to see it. Um, I hope I'm really helping. But if you do like the video and subscribe, it really helps with YouTube, with the algorithms and all that rubbish to um, build the channel up a bit more and share it with more people. If you have got any questions, as I said, email me at strokerecoveryvideo at gmail.com. Um, I'm asked a lot of personal questions and I'm happy to answer them. So email me. If you need some, if somebody needs help, they want me to FaceTime them to give them some motivation. I'm happy to do that. I do that a lot during the week. Um, FaceTime people and just really make sure they're staying on the right path. You can get me on Facebook as well. It's probably easier to email because as soon as I put my Facebook on YouTube, I've got like 10,000 friend requests and I'll never be able to find you. So email me first or get me on Messenger. Um, I'll definitely get back to you and try and help you as best as I can. Thanks guys, see you next time.